Yo, yo, yo. Welcome to another episode of the Black Superheroes Matter podcast. I'm your host, Stephen Christian, and today we have Naeem Sharif. He is a talented animator and credits much of his influences in his art from growing up in the creative scene in Atlanta, Georgia, and from a young age, his calling has always been animation. And that would prove to be true. He's done a lot of stuff in the industry for the past five years, from working on Archer as a storyboard artist to doing stuff on Netflix, and he also co-founded a creative studio called Daggershot Studios, which is a creative agency that produces work for film, television, and advertising. And so, excited to have him on the podcast and excited for him to share his story with us, so let's go ahead and get it started. I wanted to take a break from the episode to let you know that we have some merch that is available. Over at Illtopia Studios, you can find the Black Superheroes Matter art book, which is a collection of illustrations that reimagine your favorite superheroes through the eyes of children of color. We also have a bunch of sticker packs, over 120 different sticker designs of your favorite superheroes. More importantly, we have our Color Me Super coloring book series. Definitely check out the merch at shop.illtopia.com or blacksuperheroesmatter.com. And now, back to the episode. Welcome to another episode of the Black Superheroes Matter podcast. Today we have Naeem, was it Naeem Sharif? Yep, it's me. Uh, from Atlanta, Georgia. And uh, yeah, yeah, welcome. How's everything going with you? Hey, everything's great, man. I appreciate you for having me on your platform. Uh, everything's good. Just taking a break from work, drawing right now, actually, so. Nice, nice. Yeah. And so, uh, and so, what are you like? Are you, uh, um, you're an animator, you're uh, an artist, a, a comic book illustrator? Like, like, how would you, how would you describe like, uh, what you do? Um, yeah. Well, a little bit of both. Mainly, mainly nowadays, I, I mainly do uh, animation stuff, like storyboard artist I'm, uh, I worked on some shows for Netflix Stretch Armstrong I was a storyboard artist on Archer and now like you know I have my own studio like my own animation studio so it's actually all I work on now just animation stuff maybe from time to time when I have a little bit of free time I'll do some like illustration comic book type stuff but is mainly just animation is all I do. Okay. So, and yeah. uh, are you doing more, would you say like, you're doing more like 2D animation stuff or 3D animation stuff? 2D animation for sure. It's actually like my favorite storytelling medium. So hmm. I, I, I like to incorporate 3D stuff into my uh, 2D stuff, but mainly it's just, old-fashioned pencil to paper or like drawing on my tablet nice nice yeah i've um i've been animating for a minute but i haven't the only like pencil paper animation stuff that i've really done is like you know like when you used to do like flip card like flip books flip card books i used to do that and then once i got a tablet i was like i'm not i'm not killing no more trees trying to trying to do these these little flip books anymore man i will say ever since i got my cintiq i is i don't really draw my sketchbook no more i don't draw on paper that much anymore yeah. it's so because uh, control nice. z, command z has changed my life so much yeah and you can't do that with the pencil and paper yeah like oh. it, it's a uh, i think command z and just having another layer is being able to just like layer something layers. Exactly. Like layers change the game for me. I was like, oh, I just put another layer on here and just do this. This is nice. Yo, you know, because when I used to back in high school, like I graduated high school in 2010. We uh I used to do a lot of like illustrations in my sketchbook, like and I'll have to erase and everything. And if I if I colored something the wrong color. It just mess up the whole picture, but tablets. So they it takes so much stress out of my artwork. Yeah, 
like uh and i think i'm trying to get a like a more portable tablet i'm probably just going to get an ipad i mean at this point uh just because of like procreate and stuff like that is available now um mm -hmm. but i have like a larger cintiq and i think i've because you know like animation takes a while so like you're sort of just like at your desk just working on something for hours and so uh now that it's summertime right like i want to get outside i want to do this i still but i still want to be productive right and so right, right, right. um and so i don't need like i could always go back to my computer to like do clean up and do all that but just to just like get out and draw and just get some fresh air i i think i'm i'm like leaning towards that a little bit more now Winter time is a different story. I don't want to go outside, but now it, it's nah. about to be 110 degrees in a couple of days. I don't want to be in the house. That was the weather's like in Portland. Yeah, it's it's going to be it's 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 going to be nasty. <laughs> it's only like 75 degrees here in Atlanta. Oh, Dang, 110. Oh, wow. Yeah, it's it, it's not like that all the time though. Like it, it's uh it's typically around you know like the 80s. It might get up into the 90s, but around July, yeah, like we'll get to like every year you'll have probably a couple of days of the summertime where it's like 103, 104. There are times where it was like 107. Um, when it was like the fires, like the fires last year, that mess sucked because it was hot. And like the air quality was horrible. So it, it, it just sort of just compounds on it. So um, for like prime day, I ended up getting some more like air filters because, you know, it's just like when the heat is like that, you'll have to, you'll want to have some like, you, it, the air quality in, is going to be bad. Oh yeah. I used to live in uh, LA actually. And oh yeah, it's, I needed one of those in my apartment in LA because yeah it's you can smell how bad the air is there yeah it's uh it's fine honestly, yep yeah. just get those put those on 24 hours a day and you know you just change them every six months and then that's pretty much it and so uh so it's a, it's pretty solid like if you get the right ones um yeah. but yeah it, it's it definitely changed the game for me and so uh yeah yeah like so going back to going back like how did you get started you know, because I, I know a handful, I know a handful of black animators, mm -hmm. right? Like, it's not like, you know, it's not like you'd be like, oh, yeah, you know, like, I know this dude, this dude, this dude, like, everybody that I've met is either from, like, a convention or yeah. from, like, Instagram or something like that. I just sort of stumbled on their work and we connected. But I never, like, just walked down the street or went to something and was like, oh, yeah, you an animator too? Cool, you know? And that's so the like, thing I love. Started? Well, okay. Uh, with art period or just like animation? Um, I mean, art period, but then how did like get into animation? Okay. You know? All right. So I have an older brother, two older brothers and a younger sister. And my oldest brother is nine years older than me. And he draws too, but he draws more like realism type stuff, like really, like really detailed drawings. And, you know, being a little brother, you always want to be like your big brother. So I started drawing. Then I kept drawing. Then I started watching like cartoons and Power Rangers and Ninja Turtles and all that stuff. And I was like, you know what? I want to have my own show on TV one day. So during class growing up, I would just be drawing all the time. I'm surprised I graduated like 3.0 GPA, honestly, because I <laughs> rarely did any work. I was drawing all the time. But in high school, I met my friend who's actually the uh, co-founder of our animation studio. But he introduced me into like to anime, right? Mm. Like before this, all I knew was like Dragon Ball Z. And I didn't really know what anime was at the time. But he introduced me to like Bleach and uh, One Piece, Death Note, all this stuff. And I'm like, yo, I know what I want to do. So me and him, we started creating a uh, like ideas for stories. And we live here in Atlanta. So this is us in like 19, 20. We go to like Cartoon Network and Adult Swim and try to like walk in to pitch our ideas. But we realize like <laughs> you can't do that. You can't just walk to a big old corporation 
try to pitch. So we decided, you know what, let's learn. Let's just put our heads down. Let's learn, see how these people are doing this stuff. So I decided to learn storyboarding and uh, animation. And he actually went to SCAD to learn animation. And I uh, went to the Los Angeles Film School. So while in LA, I met this black animator from Atlanta actually. And he was a, a professional animator. He used to work on a lot of Disney films and everything. And like, I asked him like, yo, teach me how to storyboard because this is a draw, but I want to tell my stories. Like, show me how, like show me different camera shots, you know, how to pan, do stuff like that. So I, he was like, you know what, I got you. You, you from where I'm from, I'm, I'm gonna put you on. I'm show you how it's done in the industry. And so for like three months, every Sunday I would have to drive. He stayed in like Malibu. Oh, and I stayed in LA. So that's I had to make- That's in the cuts. <laughs> yeah, so I, had, I made every Saturday morning, I had to be there at 12 and I had to make that drive. And it's like, traffic was horrible. It was like an hour and a half drive, but I didn't care because when I was there for two hours straight, I was learning storyboarding. Uh, it would like critique my work and then I just got good. So once I finished taking his course, I would just write out scripts. Like I always have like a notebook on me to where I can write down my ideas. So I'll just write ideas for like little shorts. It can be like, you know, a guy sees a girl he likes for the first time. Or like it was like a police chase scene or something like that, and I would just storyboard these ideas and I put them on Facebook and I would post on Facebook like probably every two months I would have a new short storyboard. And this one guy who worked on uh, Netflix shows actually hit me up through Facebook. He was like, "Hey, I see your work. You know, you you're getting really really good." From where you started off like I'd like to offer you a job you know it, for right now since it would be your first job you know it'll be like temp work but I would like you to like you know do some storyboard revisions on a show called Stretch Armstrong. Stretch Armstrong was a show like Netflix tried to push out a couple of years ago to like a superhero show but I don't, I don't know if it's still going on now so I did that and that was like my first professional experience and so as I'm working on that, like I'm, I have something to, to uh, put on my resume. So I applied to, you know, the show Archer mm -hmm. on FX. Yeah. I applied there and I applied to uh, Bob's Burgers. Both of those uh, animation studios are here in Atlanta. So I applied to both of them. I got hit back by both, but Archer hit me back first. So I took the job with them and I was a storyboard artist on, uh, season nine of Archer. So like, I'm just, as I'm there, when I get there, I'm automatically like the worst storyboard artist there <laughs> because it's, and when I tell you like, it was embarrassing because they, everyone on my storyboarding team was like industry professionals. Like uh, one of my homies who works there, he, he did some stuff for Marvel and Disney. Other girls like, just professionals and all I did was like some revisions for this one show so every like we get a new script every week to where we have to storyboard it and every week we'd always have like uh meetings to where we critique the scenes that we had I would always get the most critiques <laughs> it was it was so so bad like it was embarrassing and I was like you know what you got to you got to do better. So I started buying books because I didn't want to be in last place anymore. I started buying books. Uh, I started just doing my research and reading on. And like I, eventually I got better. You know, I, I started to gain respect there. So after season nine of Archer, uh, I left because I wanted to start my own animation studio. Uh, hmm. My friend and I, we got commissioned by the NBA to do like a basketball commercial before COVID happened. Like, you know, with a lot of different players in a, in a scenario. I don't, I, I can't really speak on it just in case they want to do something with it. But yeah, right before COVID started, uh, you remember like the, 
last year's season paused and they had to do bubble and all that stuff. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So it kind of delayed the uh, premiere of our commercial and everything. And a lot of the players that we animated don't even play for the same teams no more. So I oh, doubt man. they'll do anything. <laughs> yeah, so it was like it was like four months of work, but it is what it is. But uh, after that, me and my friend, we were like, yo, we can really do this and, and make some money off of this. Because that was like our first like real – real job and so ever since then we've been doing like commercials uh stuff for businesses and like we're also behind the scenes working on a proof of concept so we can pitch our show to netflix so nice that's kind of get i guess that answers your question yeah yeah i mean that that's the journey right there like it, it's a I think it's it's very rare that we get to see sort or get to hear um sort of like a journey in the middle of the journey right like yeah. you're talking about stuff that happened like last year you know that it's stuff that that's really you know it was like around the corner at this point oh yeah for and, sure uh and yeah wow yeah so it's and so it really just started for you really just like connecting with somebody and then them you know you seeing them like doing what you wanted to do and just be like, Hey, this, that's what I want. You know, like it. That's, that's real. And it's like, I had been searching because the reason I went to the, to the, I didn't, I never really wanted to get my degree in uh, computer animation. I always wanted to, uh, 2D animation is what I wanted to get my degree in. But a lot of the schools in California, didn't offer those programs so I ended up going there but no one at the school I went to really first of all I was like one of the only black kids well black people at the school anyways and no one no one there really cared about anime and we just had because I'm I'm a kid from Atlanta so it's like I'm I was new to this, the whole culture out in LA. So it was like, it was hard to find people who were interested in what I was interested in, especially since I was one of the only black kids in the whole school. So it was, it was at first, before I met all these cool people out in LA, it was, it was, it was kind of sad. Cause it was like, man, I thought LA, I, I was thinking as a kid, like, yeah, I'm gonna go there. I'm gonna work for Nickelodeon work the Cartoon <laughs> Network and by the time I'm 24 I'm gonna have my own show but oh, it, <laughs> it don't work <laughs> it don't work like that it, it's it's a uh, yeah I think that was uh when when were you in LA 2012 through 2015 Okay, so that was like I was down in LA from like 2014 to 2015, uh, and okay. yeah, I remember that time. I I think that during that time, that's pretty much when I started this project because I was bouncing around. I was doing a I was doing more compositing. Yeah, I was doing like visual effects and compositing, and what I found is that like and like my cousin uh, was down there and he was working for Code Black at the mm, time okay. who, was, yeah. who was doing like all of like Kevin Hart stuff at the moment right and right. so uh and so I got connected with um like Michael Blackson I got connected with Rip Michaels and sort of like Nick Cannon's camp uh like some of Nick Cannon's like comedian camp and a uh, TI's comedian camp that was like down there because uh, right. okay. everybody had like the same managers it, it like everybody was like managed by the same people or like it was small once you got connected yeah and I had this idea of like I want to bring like that sort of anime flair with like black comedy and with like all these comedians that I'm connecting with and like do like some YouTube stuff and um and it it, it was interesting because I was like once I got connected with the black people, then it was like, okay, now I got to figure out like how to communicate, like what I want, like what I think they can do. Yeah. Uh, but they weren't, could they weren't like watching anime. They weren't doing these things. So then it was like, well, crap, I'm going to just do some just crazy stuff. I would just film some stuff and then just do some crazy stuff and then just show it to them. 
and oh. uh, it's all just record. And then I would spend the whole night like whipping something up, and then I would show it to them. And they'd be like, "Dang, let me call up so and so, and let's do this, let's do that, yeah, let's yeah, do that." Yeah. But like, but prior to that, like nothing was happening, right? Like it, it like a good like three or four months of just like, just you know, cold calls and running in like trying to reach out to people and stuff and then uh and then and then i re- like i think at some point i was like okay this isn't sustainable because like yes i'm being able to like do stuff but like i ain't i'm like running through all the money that i saved at this point and i'm sleeping on a couch and i need to make it i need to i need to it needs to be a little more sustainable than this yeah and so uh so that's how i ended up in portland because it's portland is just a lot cheaper and it's it's more of a comic book like for where i was at i was more comic illustration and stuff mm-hmm. and uh and that's where portland sort of you know that's where portland was at and so it, it just sort of worked out for me uh you know moving to portland from la um definitely not regretting it at all you know but wait is, so you're uh, originally from la then? i'm from uh i'm from the bay area and so i oh, moved down gotcha. to la uh to uh, to do all the stuff that like I was doing, and then I realized that I didn't need to be in LA for it to do that stuff. And so that's I, actually like I learned that too. Like I'm a lot of stuff that I was doing, I didn't need to be in LA for it. Like I thought, yeah, work for Netflix, you got to be in LA, you got to be here and there. But nah, a lot of stuff like you can do remote nowadays. Oh yeah especially now right like you know you had no other choice but to do it remote so now it's uh you know it's you know the i always joke around that like for me as a freelancer that's sort of like working on creative projects it's like the stuff that people had to go through last year that's the stuff that like i that's a regular day for me you know like you know i get an email or i get a call hey that's real been you know literally my you know i get jobs off of emails you know it's and uh it it was interesting to see how like everybody else had to sort of had to get a glimpse of that and and so a lot of the complaints that people would have would be like yeah it sucks right like (laughs) finding that balance that best sucks (laughs) hey man the thing is covid to me personally like i I prefer like just working and being by myself and staying home. Like it didn't really hurt me like as yeah. bad as it hurt a lot of people. Like a lot of artists, I know that COVID really didn't hurt, hit them as bad as it hit a lot of other people. And I'm just, I'm, I'm thankful for that man, because I'm just sitting in doing what I always do. Just sitting in my, in my office drawing all the time. So yeah like uh during that like when things started to sort of like pick up or get bad um i knew a lot of people and i was one of them where it was like okay now that like i have some time let's actually just like start learning some stuff that like i've always just wanted to just do right um and so i know tons of people that was like okay well i'm gonna just pick up blender and try to and try to learn blender and stuff like that you know everybody is saying that i need to learn blender too like <laughs> especially for like 2d because they have like new like grease pencil yeah i'm thinking about doing that because i can save a whole lot of time in my in my because i paint all my backgrounds by hand mm. and like yeah. I, that's that so cool. time consuming. hey 3d backgrounds that's the you way know, to go 3D? right 3d i kid you not like you set up the bat you set up the background once you know you could get some stuff off the internet you get asset stores and all that to like get all the rocks and all the things that you need especially buildings and then you you draw the frame like you know obviously the foreground and then if you want to just change the angle you just change the angle and then you can just redraw the frame what like it's like like it, it camera angles 
like it changes like all the time that it spends to try to figure out this and it's like yeah. dang this didn't work but i spent like an hour on it is you know like i will say like you i i never i was never like an interior designer like i never yeah. got into like design like you know set design but like being able to like build out a scene and and sort of control those details and then and understanding that like i only have to do it once that mess is i i enjoy that now like i really enjoy that now um yeah i just really enjoy it now like well, it, it is different like I gotta, I gotta learn man i gotta put some time to it yeah it, it's like grease pencil i don't know grease pencil at all i i played around with it a little bit but um but yeah i didn't uh, i i was more interested in like trying to do like 3d animation rigging all those different things and um realized i'm, I'm not i appreciate blender but yeah. i'm more into like i'll just get the i'll just have the character once it's rigged i'm good you know i want to do the anim the keyframe animation for that and then yeah, i want to yeah. change some angles because the angle is just that mess just changed the game for me like you have no idea like That's how crazy. like going from 2d animation to this uh and still being able to do 2d but um but not having uh but feeling like it's more efficient uh yeah. for me creatively that's like that that's what i really enjoy yeah because um, when i when i i'm working on a project i've been working on for the past year and before i even like start the animation because I hate painting backgrounds so much, but it has to be done. But like I'll yeah. knock it out first. And that takes like so much time of just boring painting trees and all that stuff. So yeah. I need I need to learn that for sure. Oh yeah. Trees, rocks, build look at trees, rocks, buildings. Those things I refuse to like I'll I'll storyboard and just do a little chicken scratch so that I know that it needs to be there. Right. And then I'm building that mess. Like I'm, I got you. Get an asset store. You go to an asset store. And you just get a tree pack. Mm, yeah. Like it. And if you want to remodel it or retexture it, you could do that as well. Like you could change it. Like it, it's, it's, it's different. Like it, when we're done with this interview, I'll send you what I've been working on, and you'll you'll see from firsthand just how many trees I had to paint. Like, I think I've painted over a hundred trees for this project. Oh yeah, no, uh -uh. oh no, yeah, we can't do that. Like, your time yeah. is money. We, we it's like, you can't be doing that. It's uh, well, yeah. I, I think the the thing that I learned, you know, like you'll go on like art station and stuff like that. Yeah. So like, I learned that like concept designers, most of them are using like a three D to like two D workflow. Where they'll set everything up, they'll kit bash things, and they'll yeah. set everything up, and then they'll just paint. They'll take a picture, or they'll take a screenshot, and, and then they'll paint over it. And so once I and they were doing that for like cityscapes and all these things, because I was like, like hey, matte paintings, right? Yeah, yeah, like matte paintings and stuff. And so once I found out that, then I I started following this animator in like Norway that does all of his. Um, he he's a two D animator, but he uses Cinema four D for all of his backgrounds and all of his like. Uh, sets and so was it like you know uh was it like olaf's like olaf storm i watch i watch his stuff i watch his stuff yeah you watch yeah. it like yeah like i started seeing his stuff i was like oh crap i gotta get into this like yeah. he starts talking he starts talking about how he like does all his animation in photoshop and he'd be using cinema 4d and just doing all the stuff in after effects and i was mm -hmm. like dang you know, that's what I was doing with like live action stuff. I didn't know you could do that with animation. Oh man, I need to get into this. It, it really changes the game when you think about it. It does. Like, it does. Like, it because at first, like, right, like the limitations on animation is like you need to sort of know, you have to know how to do it all. You know, you have to know how to create it. And if you don't know how to create it, then you don't achieve that effect. And I think like anime is like a perfect example where you got to learn all these flashes and like these oh, like, yeah. approaches to like adding impact to it and you got to draw it all. And so when it comes to like when after seeing how like you could actually use tools to like explore the ideas and you're not hindered by like 
your own capabilities and this could actually just improve it i was like dang i need to i need to do this <laughs> like i knew this i'm telling you man like i it's great because my animation studio so far is just three people working and this new technique like incorporating blender can speed up the workflow so much yeah so much yeah i'm 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 gonna just two weeks straight just boot camp just watch how to how to do that stuff on youtube like two okay. weeks straight. uh hey skillshare udemy youtube oh, like cool. all that mess like um yeah that that's how i feel um i am getting into zbrush like mm, i got okay. a chance to play with zbrush same, like, I love ZBrush. It, it's like, man, ZBrush is so powerful. Man. Like it, it's, it, uh, like it, oh. it just, it just. I, I just feel like I've been living under a rock, and all these people are over here. Just like I see some stuff, I'm like, how the heck are you doing that? And then it's like, oh, you're using this, you're using this, man. I need to get on that. Like, I will tell you, like when I moved the first time, like when I graduated high school and I moved from Atlanta to California, there was just so much stuff I didn't know that I didn't know about <laughs> animation. I didn't even realize, like, it's just because I was, I guess I was a, a big fish in a small pond in Atlanta back in like 2010 2011 because animation yeah. wasn't booming at all here but then you know we we got people like marcus williams and everything here in atlanta doing all the stuff but back then we didn't have nobody so when i moved to la i was just my mind was so blown man so blown yeah it, yeah like it, it's as i'm thinking like you know in Atlanta, like Atlanta is like one of the spots to be at now. Like, oh, it, definitely. It's, yeah. Like, it's like cause my uh, one of my best friends just moved out there uh, before the pandemic because uh, he works for I think Court TV or something like that. One of the studios out there. It's even more of the live, like the 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 live production side. And, but like you know, half the Marvel movies, half of you know like vfx places like Everything. places that, like it and so like what is it like how is it out like being in la and then uh because you had that sort of like the la experience um and then uh being in atlanta like how like how is that um do you feel like you are able to tap into all the things that are out there or does it like how does it feel i feel like like Atlanta is definitely where where it's at right now, but I feel like that's more on the film side. You know, you don't have as many animation opportunities here in Atlanta as you do in LA, because the animation in in North America, like the animation industry, is in LA and like Canada. You know, <laughs> yeah. So you have like mainly if i wanted to work in storyboards like storyboards here it would be mainly like film storyboards or stuff for like video games or something but yeah i think la has a the bigger and it always has because that's where like disney is that's where like all the major animation studios are so but if you want to get into film atlanta is where you need to be at you know yeah hey at this point video games ain't too bad either I'm like, like video games is and in video games is actually i mean it's it's nice like getting going because you're essentially doing the same stuff yeah it's you know it's still the same stuff it's just the medium i mean essentially yeah you're doing most of it's 3d animation it, it really is like and really storytelling don't. like <laughs> like that that's it you know and and you know they're going to do an update <laughs> like there's always going to be a new game coming out you exactly. know? i have a friend who uh he only 
he does storyboards for cutscenes for video games. And like that's mm. that's how he makes his money. It's <laughs> like he he'll, he'll probably do like maybe two months straight of work and just get paid at the end. Oh, like just yeah. living his life, man. That's that's a good hustle that he's running though, for real. Yeah, that's that's, that, that's I think that's that's it right there you get to do your own personal stuff you gotta you like that that's a good little balance right there like like it's yeah it's so um what are the things that you're what are the projects that you're like excited about doing now uh um okay so this is one I'm currently working on with uh, Outcast. I can't really say too much about it, but I'm excited about that. Uh, we've been working on it for like the past month now. Hmm. Yeah. And then uh, like my own personal stuff that I get to work on. Like anytime I have time to sit aside and just work on my own stuff is a good day. Because like I... I want to work on my own stuff. I don't want to just do other people's <laughs> stuff. Realize other people's dreams. You know, oh, I got I yeah. got stories I want to I want to uh, talk about too. Yeah. Nice, nice. Yeah, like it, it's a. Uh, it's weird. I I've met people that only just want to work freelance stuff, and they're they're content with just like doing like work for hire stuff, and they do that for decades. Uh. And for me, it's like, I got a glimpse of that. And at some point when I, once I realized that I was, yeah, to that point, like working on other people's stuff more than I was working on my stuff, then I was like, I need to find some balance here. Cause you know, like I'm, you know, if you have stories and stuff, you're, you're constantly having ideas Mm -hmm. and I got a notebook. I'm constantly writing all these things down before I know it. I got, you know, tons of ideas on paper that you know I just don't have time to work on exactly. and I was just like I and so I think uh, earlier this year I was like okay I'm a I'm a I'm a bust out like a whole bunch of different you know uh client projects and then after that I'm gonna just go cold turkey because you know I just need time to just work on stuff that I care about and um because that's yeah, how you get cool. burnt out when you're just doing stuff for other people yeah it's like I'm not passionate about this. Like working at Archer was a great experience, but I got so tired of drawing Archer all day <laughs> long, every day. Like <laughs> then when I get home, I'd be so tired. I didn't even feel like working on my own stuff. So yeah, and, it, it was, and it I was, think it, I think it just it just it just wears on you. you know? Yeah. Um, the the only thing that I like wish I had the opportunity to do more is work in an environment that like wasn't so lonely, you know, like wasn't sort of so isolated from everybody. Because like I, you know, I'll have clients that are in Portland, right? Like I'll have clients in LA, I'll have clients mm-hmm. in like Michigan and New York and all these different places, right? So I may, you know, I'll talk to them on the phone and stuff like that. But it's me just like on my computer, just like all day, just working on these things, right? right and right. and it obviously got worse over the past year because you can't go anywhere. And so uh, and so it, it's like having the opportunity to sort of just like work around, like work amongst people, even if you're doing completely different things, just like not being just not not it just being you and Spotify, right? Like you like you doing like being you and like you and other stuff like other people sort of going around um you getting tired of listening to them playlists over and over again well you know i'm a podcaster so like i'm good but like and whenever you want just like some easy feedback or you just want somebody just like gloss over some stuff or just spitball some ideas right right, Um, right. compared to other jobs that i had like pre-pandemic i was like a personal trainer right and so it's like um being able to just like sort of connect with people and and sort of have these organic like insightful conversations that like you know can lead to some better work it's you know I felt like I 
I have to like go out of my way to find that opposed to just like going to work and that just sort of happening. Right, right. I feel you, man. That's that's real, man. But lucky for me in Atlanta, we got a a big like black art scene. So yeah, I can always you know have people I can uh, see and talk to and stuff. So oh yeah, I guess, I guess yeah. you don't really have that in Portland, huh? No, nah, we just no, nah, uh, uh-uh. like right now, I'm the I'm the black AR guy. That that that's what I'm known for right now. Uh, any sort of AR projects that black people want to do, they hitting up Steve. That's that's what's happening right now. And so uh, I think it's like black AR guy or the black animator. Like it, it's sort of because AR is just like a lot of animation. Um, and so that's where I sort of fit into it. And um, and yeah, yeah, like it, it's a uh, you don't really get that right because I think uh, I had. Um, like one of the early podcasts, I think was a uh, was Keith Cross, but a uh, Keith Cross who who's doing uh, Day Black. Mm, um, okay, yeah, yeah. I had uh, I, I want to say Indigo Inc., who's a uh, who has a uh, like a web comic on a uh, webtoon. Um, I believe eventually I'll have Paper Frank on. I, I was supposed to be doing some stuff with him. For AR stuff, but wow, okay. yeah, I, that sort of fell off. <laughs> I need to, I need to hit him up about that. Uh, um, and yeah, yeah, like I want to say, like every like every like five guests is always somebody from LA. <laughs> mm-hmm. Oh, I have like if you really interested, I can uh, after this interview is over, I can give you a list of really cool people you might you might uh unintentionally overlooked but they're like really big in it well not big but they're like really made a name for themselves on instagram and like we pretty cool friends if you want to interview oh yeah them. yeah but, yeah definitely definitely because okay. uh i know um i had i had greg burnham on and so uh mm, yeah. and so i need to have i need to have marcus on um big, yeah. you know i'm i'm really good friends with uh with uh anthony piper with the uh, trill league and i so, met him uh, once when he came to atlanta Oh yeah, yeah. Because he's yeah. he's been he's been bouncing around. He he sort of found his footing in L.A. and uh, and you know going through the hoops and letters of trying to get something optioned. Man, I I was excited when I heard that like he would be working with Fifty Cent on the Trail League stuff. So. Yep, and then uh, and then Quibi and then Quibi happened. Oh man, yeah, that's you know, yeah. It's just it's just uh. And it, it's that's just that's just part of it's just part of what it is, right? Like that's just part of the industry, and uh, and yeah. I feel like something like that. It's like it's it's such a quality idea that you can't just put, go with anybody. Like you you might have to sit on it for some years before you can like have someone really appreciate. It. Yeah, it's a uh, yeah. I mean, it, it's it's just. I think with, you know, because we'll have different like variations of the show, we'll have like these sort of the intellectual property and then you actually have like the show that comes out, right? Mm-hmm. And instantly I'm thinking about like how many different versions of like the Teen Titans did we get, right? We got like the first Teen Titans, we got like the Teen Titans Go, we got the, you know, the movie, like the DC like Universe the, Teen Titans, yeah. we got the live action one. Like we got all these different, like we got Young Justice, right? Like we had all these different variations, and you know I hated Teen Titans Go, but give me me Young Justice. I actually like it. It was it was not like going from Young Justice to Teen Titans Go. I was not pleased. You know I was not pleased. But well, it has like like, my bad. Go ahead. Like it. Like they all, they they have their own little like circle or ecosphere, right? Like that they sort of occupy. And um, and so it's like you know it was cool. People get the people get their stuff, but give me my give me my you know give me my gritty gritty Teen Titans, and that's what I want. And yeah. uh, did you watch the Teen Titans versus Teen Titans Go movie? Uh, I watched a little bit of it. I still need to go back and watch it. It, it. Well, everything is animated with Flash. Like even the Teen Titans are animated with Flash. So it's not the two D hand-drawn fluid anime and it, it's so noticeable that i it, yeah. it takes me out of the experience because 
I see Teen Titans, I want like that fluid 2000s drawing style, you know? <laughs> yeah. Like uh, Glenn Murakami, but it's, he wasn't, he, he wasn't even a part of this movie in, in, in the first place. So he didn't direct mm-hmm. it or nothing. Yeah. So. Cause it's like, uh, like the Flash animation style, that, that's more of like, I mean, that's just what you'll get in like, you know, kids' cartoons and like YouTube stuff, right? Yeah. Like the good old days of like, you know, YouTube animation where they're doing Pokemon parodies and all those different things, like with new grounds and stuff like that. Y'all like, remember that, man? Man, that, that was, was a good old. era. Look at So I, uh, I did, um, I did one of them called uh, Pokemon Twerk Team. Hands down, exactly what it said. Like it, you know, he like what was it? It was like twenty. It was like twenty eleven or twenty twelve. Like the peak of like YouTube animation before they like started to. Uh, they started to do. Um, <laughs> they they changed the algorithm and they and like animators didn't want to like it wasn't worth it for animators to do all this work for. Um, yeah. For YouTube and stuff, but uh, but yeah, you know, peak of that, you know, started that series. It, yeah, it, it's a, it was a fun time. Like it was a fun time, and then uh, you know, I miss those days. Those like those are some very fun days. But yeah, oh, it, it's, you know, the <laughs> internet will. The internet is amazing, <laughs> especially the internet around like 2012 to 2015. Oh yeah. Uh, it was it was like right in that sweet spot yeah and it's uh, like like, because like youtube animation and like animation on youtube isn't the same anymore i feel like it's just like glorified storyboards essentially pretty much man i'm i'm tired of that style like where it's like ambiguous characters are just sort of like you know marshmallow stick figures and (laughs) All right, how do you feel about uh, like Adventure Time and shows like like that? I like Adventure Time because the story the story is good. Like I like the I like the writing of it, but I'm not. I have a controversial. Go ahead. What were you gonna say? I think it's fun and lighthearted, but like. I I don't because like the like the Adventure Time is sort of like the same sort of animation style or like the same animation approach as like Rick and Morty. Yeah, I feel like exactly. I feel like Adventure Time kind of ruined animation because every show has that same sort of style, like you know, it's, regular it's like show. A, it's like nut. Remember, like Nickelodeon had all those shows, and like they all like. Um, well, they were like half of them were made by like uh, what was it like Bruce Harmon? Oh, uh, Butch Harmon. Yeah, yeah, Butch Harmon. Um, Butch Hartman. Har- Har- yeah, Hartman. Butch Hartman. And yeah. uh, and so I think it's uh, you know, like with uh, with like early Cartoon Network, it was sort of like the Hanna Barbera. Then it went into like that Bruce Tim era mm-hmm. where like everything sort of had that like you know that grit to it. And then then we sort of moved into like the early two thousands where like fairly odd parents and like all those shows started to come out and it's had that sort of like that you could tell it was like that's what you like north american animation looked like yeah. right american animation was sort of this flash style where you're not really it's like it's like it was made in illustrator rather than photoshop mm. like it it was like the difference between like illustrator and photoshop to me and that's that's what i always like saw it as and I think that's why I didn't like Teen Titans Go, you know, because it was like, I don't like, no, you know. It, it's crazy. It's like an art style can take you out of a show completely. Yeah. You know? Yeah. It's, like uh, for the longest time before, it took me forever to, to watch Ed, Ed, and Eddie. <laughs> like once, yeah. I mean, once I started to like the show, I, I loved it, but. When it was new, it took forever for me to get into it because it, it was so different. Yeah. But, like yeah. um, because like that style, like that style, it was like very it was like Courage the Cowardly Dog. It was like Ed Ed and Eddie. And then um 
there's like another there's like another show that like was very similar to it in that style yeah it was like oh cow and chicken cow and chicken yeah okay yeah yeah, yeah 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 cow and chicken was like that and but, then and then they started to get um and then it started to be more of like the adventure time like adventure time came out and then uh well, before and then, that it was like like billy and mandy and chowder and like kids yeah and yeah yeah you know? And then it moved like once Adventure Time, everything now, even to this day, cartoons have like that Adventure Time influence. Yeah, yeah. And it's yeah. like, and I, and I think it's just because like it's it's cheaper to do it that way. I mean, like yeah. what like me knowing how the animation industry is, it's just like it's cheaper to do it that way, and so that's why that's why they're doing it. And so I was just like. Well, I mean, give me a good story. Give me some explosions. Like, like do something <laughs> that, uh, you know, just spice it up a little bit. Um, but as somebody that uses Flash, I appreciate it, right? I mean, like, yeah. It, 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 it's cool. Like, you know? Everything has its place, you know. Yeah. Everything has its fan base. And some of the shows that I, because, like, one of my favorite shows of all time was, like, Hey Arnold. I just, you know, even though you don't see shows like that anymore today, I guess times has changed. And so yeah. stuff like that doesn't doesn't really exist. So it's, you got to appreciate it for what it was, you know. Yeah. I used to be one of those cynical, oh, I hate this show. It's so different. It's so different. But you can't you can't fight change, you know. Well, one one show like shows like there's a show called Baki on Netflix. And I can't watch it because the the style just is so like it just doesn't work for me. Like, it's so much going on. I know what you mean. Yeah, it's it's like it's all glossy and and you know it's three D, but like they have this like two D shader on it. And have you watched the just... uh, Dragon Prince? No, no, I haven't. I haven't checked that out yet. Yeah, because uh, the uh, Aaron E. has the the writer for Avatar. That's like his show, and his mm-hmm. show is like it's three D with a two D shader on, but it works because it yeah. has that light hearted Avatar: The Last Airbender feel. So mm. yeah, watch it when you when you get a chance. It's it's really good actually. It's 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 like it's funny, and it's like a, okay. it's like light hearted, and you can see where. Like that tone comes from an Avatar: The Last Airbender. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna yeah. have to check that out. Uh, yeah, sure, man. It's like shows like Kipo. Like I finished Kipo. How um, is it? I have I've heard good, and I follow like all the animators on Instagram. It's who, it's um, solid. Like it, it's it's a nice like it's um it reminds me of uh, the style reminds me of uh, Angry Beavers. Like it, it's Angry. a it's a it's a very like. It's very like loose, like it it it's just fun, you know. It just it just feels really fun, and so uh, and so I I really, like really enjoyed that. Um, and then obviously like you know the animes that are on there, like Seven Deadly Sins and stuff like that. And then um, uh, Castlevania, like Castlevania is a is a really solid one. So that's that's yeah. the anime stuff too. And so it, I feel like with Castlevania, I'm gonna have to like just. The reason I, I'm I've hesitated from watching it is I feel like I gotta invest like a lot of thought into it. Is that is that what it's like? No, I mean it, it's pretty like it, it's it's really easy to like get through that one. It, it's it's it you could go into a cold turkey and you'd be like, oh okay, like who's this? Who's this? Okay, cool. Like it, it's not like you need to know anything about the games. Um, yeah. And so I I, I really enjoyed it because uh. It, it it really like sucks you in in a in a very like immersive way and i think that it it's yeah it's just written it's just it's just done very well and so i i really appreciate it i'll check it out then because yeah my brother told me everybody said watch it so i'm, I'm gonna check it out yeah yeah yeah, yeah. Cool. but uh but yeah, yeah, you know, it, it's it's been good to, you know, chat with you and, and talk about everything that, uh, you know, that you have going on and all that. And 
Yeah, man. Um, sure, sure. yeah, just just really curious, like you know what what do you have uh, coming down the pipeline? Uh, man, just a lot of a lot of you know a lot of stuff. Hopefully, you'll see a show coming out in the next couple of years. You know, working on that right now. But in the meantime, just making sure my animation studio is like it is growing. So you know, we're looking to hire animators, storyboard artists, and everything. So we're just we're just trying to keep everything going. We're just trying to keep up with the like the small demand that we're we're starting to grow. Nice, nice, so, nice. Most part, yeah, man. yeah. I mean, a like animation. There's a there's a lot of applications of it, especially now. You know, video games. And know, have you ever talking. seen like the line animation, like that studio? Yeah. Uh huh. Yeah. I want I want to be like them. Like that's they're, basically like, they're 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 doing they're doing some stuff. Ex you know? That's what I want our studio to be like. They are hats off. Yeah, they're, they're doing some stuff yeah it's them. like um yeah like film animation like video games like there, there's a there's a wonderful opportunity there um obviously we were talking about ar and vr stuff like that like that that's stuff that i'm trying to get i'm trying to get black people into because i know like that's you know we're talking about tech money at this point like yo it, it's it, it's different man it, it's different you know it's a uh, in it but it's like accessible now like once you have the if you're good and you got the stuff there ain't a lot of people you got to compete with you know it's uh it it changed the game for me and so uh and so yeah yeah you know it, it's it's good to you know talk to somebody that's you know sort of in the animation space but is also sort of like in this entrepreneur space as well yeah and uh you know excited to see yeah just excited to see the stuff that you know you'll be coming out with and, and cranking out and so like where can people find you uh instagram uh check out my instagram uh, at inkpen underscore tv i-n-k-p-e-n underscore tv and that's where like you know i just do a lot of illustrations there current i just finished a, a series of drawing like all the friday characters in, in my mm. style and so, like, you know, I'm, I'm going to uh, sell prints pretty soon. But, yeah, that's mainly where you can find me. If you got any questions or anything, hit me up there. Okay. Okay. That's definitely, it. definitely. We'll, we'll put that in the – we'll put that in all the promo stuff. And For sure. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's been good to chat. Um, For sure. We definitely got to do it again because I like, I, like, I like talking to people who know about animation. It's – it's rare to find like other it's, black people who know it's about rare. it. <laughs> and it's such like it's such a breath of fresh air because I don't I don't be wanting to talk about normal stuff all the time. Like, I don't want to be talking about mainstream stuff like trap music and all that stuff. I want to <laughs> talk about Ninja Turtles and and kids next door and stuff like Kim Possible. Like I just I, I'm binging the Proud family on Disney Plus and it's such a great show. Oh yeah, like that. Yeah. Like so even to that great. point, like they had their own little ecosystem of. of yeah. They had their own little pipeline. I would say they didn't like Disney Animation didn't figure out the the feature length stuff yeah. until uh, until later, but their um. But you know their shows, those Disney Channel originals, that mess was that mess was hitting. <sighs> Yo, American Dragon, uh, Kim yeah, Possible. Yeah, American Dragon, Jack Proud Long. Uh, um, yeah, like that. Like that was that was a, you know, all all the stuff that they had. You know, yeah. Disney Channel original movies. They had all their original shows. Like that mess was that, that was where it was at. Like, that was the time to grow up, man. Like I, ever since getting Disney Plus, I've been I've been just watching the classics like johnny tsunami and brink remember those and dude like, yeah <laughs> goofy tsunami. movie like that like those were man like those those were the days it was like it was like johnny tsunami came out and like oh no it was brink then johnny tsunami and then in the mid and then you go to and you go to netflix and you watch rocky power or you go to uh, nickelodeon and you watch rocky power 
Yeah, 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 yeah. Like, I actually uh, had a show, like, uh, an idea that I want, like, I'm still developing about, like, some skateboarding kids in, like, L.A. or something. I'm I'm still working on that, but so many great shows, man. That was so cool back then. Like, what, what happened to that? Like, inline skating and skateboarding and people don't really care about that stuff that much no more on Disney Channel. Okay. Yeah, not on Disney Channel. I think it's a. I think the death of car, uh, Saturday morning cartoons really, like, really like hit hit society really hard. Oh yeah, man, like for sure. Like it, it, it was, it was a reckoning because now it's like Sweet Life of Zach and Cody and all these things that came after, and then now it's all like this weird live action, yeah, man. sitcom stuff that's like. And I guess because it's cheaper to it's, produce. Yeah, I think it's just cheaper. You know, it, it's, you know, it's because like, you know, animation doesn't really like make money. Like yeah. kids animation doesn't make money. Like the toys make the money for the animation. And so I think it's like, you know, stuff like the boondocks, like they ain't got no merchandise. <laughs> right. And so it's like, you know, it, it's a, uh, yeah, I don't know. I, I'm I'm just curious. I suppose you just make a video game. <laughs> like it. Yeah, hey, really though, because like people, kids don't really buy toys like that no more. Right? Yeah, yeah. Oh, it's a. Uh, and so, yeah, maybe we'll we'll maybe we'll just find a find a little niche and just be able to explore it and put people on because that that's ultimately what it comes down to. You know, the the first to do it is. It's sort of the, you know, it's going to be, you know, it's going to be the the happy party at this point. Oh, yeah, so, most, uh, definitely, most definitely. Yeah, but again, you know, really appreciate the time and everything and uh, excited to see what you got coming out. And, sure, um, sure. and yeah, thanks for being a part of uh, this episode. Thank you for reaching out, man. I appreciate being on your platform and you got to do it again sometime for sure. Oh, yeah, definitely, definitely. Yeah, sure. Cool, cool. All right, well, you have a good one. And there we have it. That is another episode of the Black Superheroes Matter podcast in the wraps. Again, the purpose of this podcast is for people to get exposed to a variety of different things that black people are creating in the arts and entertainment industry. The goal is for this podcast to bring light to all those and those creators. Because as a community, we have the opportunity to skirt some of the problems that we've seen in this day and age when it comes to expressing blackness. And so if you love this, definitely check out the more work that we're doing. Go to at Black Superheroes Matter, or you can go to BlackSuperheroesMatter.com to check out the blog and the write-ups that we do on these guests. And if you're so inclined, feel free to support my work at Iltopia, where we have the Black Superheroes Matter art book, the Black Superheroes Matter sticker packs, and even coloring books, activity guides. And so if you want to check that stuff out, check it out at shop.iltopia.com. It's all black owned. I might add, they're all handmade products. And they're all made with love for the community that has really given me the opportunity to find my place in this world. And so, again, thank you for another wonderful episode. Thank you for listening. Feel free to follow all the stuff that Black Superheroes Matter is cranking out. And excited to share another wonderful guest with you on next episode. So without further ado, thank you very much.